For the unicorn outfit, pet outfit, you're going to need your 3.75 millimeter crochet hook as well as a tapestry needle or a darning needle and a pair of scissors. You can choose whatever colored yarn that's a similar style for the base of your uni unicorn outfit. On video tutorial, I'm going to be using I Love This Yarn. This is a metallic pinky toes colored yarn and here's some information about this yarn. The alternate color that I used for the other outfit was a soft pink colored yarn. As for the other colors for this unicorn outfit I'm using the Red Heart Super Saver pretty in pink color for the horn and the wings and I used Karen Simply Soft blue mint colored yarn as one of the colors for the hair and the tail. Here's some information about this yarn. Then you can have fun with the colors as far as what you're going to put in the hair and the tail. So pick your favorite green. This is an emerald green. On video tutorial it's hard to see the pretty emerald green color for it, but just one skein. You're going to have plenty left over. Again, we're just using small amounts of different colors in the hair and the tail. Then the other color that I chose is this really pretty pumpkin orange. And then I chose a yellow colored yarn. And this one's a fun glittery yarn by Karen Simply Soft Party. Here's some information about this yarn. And this color is Royal Sparkle. I used my anime eye printout for the eyes and this is a printout on fabric. So I have the free downloadable uh, as far as sheet that you can download. It's a PDF format just like this one and you follow the instructions for your fabric printout of choice. I chose this color fast sew in fabric sheet for inkjet printers by Taylor, June Taylor. And Hobby Lobby sells these as well as Joanne Craft Store and you could probably get these online too with Amazon. You can contact me via my blog www.helenmaycrochet.com and you'll find the contact link at the top of my homepage. I will also have this available for free download under my graphs link. So at the top of my homepage you'll see my graphs 
and charts free downloads and I'll have it in there as well. If you are using these anime eyes you're going to need a hot glue gun so I like to keep my hot glue gun in a large Ziploc folder for when I'm ready to use it. So again a hot glue gun works great for these anime eyes and you're also going to need just a white sewing thread and needle. For the base of the for the base outfit for the unicorn, I'm using my Pinky Toes metallic yarn and you're just going to take whatever yarn that you chose for the color, just fold it over on itself to form a loop. Take your crochet hook and again I'm using my 3.75 mm crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. Then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down and cinch the loop around your crochet hook. And you're going to make a chain of 77 and I'm just going to show four of them on video tutorial but you're going to go ahead and finish a chain of 77. So you just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, go through the loop for one, two, three, Four. So go ahead, finish a chain of 77, and then come back. So now, after you finish your chain of 77, we're going to make one half double crochet into the third chain from the hook. So you just count back one, two, three, and in the third chain from the hook, you're going to make one half double crochet. So you just yarn over, go into that third chain from the hook, bring up a loop, now you have three loops on the hook. Go ahead and yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and then go through all three for a half double crochet. And you're going to make one half double crochet into every stitch back across. So you yarn over, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three loops for a half double crochet. And you're going to continue making one half double crochet in every stitch back across and then come back. So now you should have a total of 76 stitches and my measurement is 17 and a half inches in width. Then you're going to move up to the next row and we're going to be making a total of six rows. So we already finished the first one. So to move up to the next row you're just going to chain two, one, two, and then go ahead and turn your work. So that first chain two that you made counts as the first half double crochet for the second row. And you can see this little upslope here beneath the chain two. This is the base of the chain two stitch. So you're not going to work into this stitch. You're going to go into the next stitch over. So you just yarn over, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop and then make a half double crochet. And then you're just going to repeat making one half double crochet in every stitch back across and when you reach the end you should still have a stitch count of 76 if you did it correctly. Now for beginners I would recommend counting your stitches because with the half double crochet it's very easy to miss that last stitch. So I would just double check, make sure that you still have the stitch count of 76. Then you can go ahead and move up to the next row. So remember we're making a total of six rows. So far I've made two. So I'm going to get you started and then I'll let you finish your six rows. But to move up to the next row you're going to chain two turn your work and then you're just going to make a half double crochet into the next stitch 
and then one half double crochet into every stitch back across and then just keep repeating this pattern until you have a total of six rows and then come back. So this is what mine looks like after finishing six rows. So now after you finish the sixth row you're going to turn your work and you're going to slip stitch into the next stitch over. So you go right into the next stitch, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and then bring the yarn through both loops on the hook. So that's your first slip stitch and we want to slip stitch into a total of 14. So there's one, two, three, four. So go ahead, finish slip stitching across until you finished a total of 14. We've already finished four. So now you can see that I slip stitched in to 14 total slip stitches. Now this is one side of the strap. So we want to make the strap on the other side too. So this is where you can either use a scrap of yarn to mark the spot or you can use your stitch marker. This is my stitch marker case from Pastiche Accessories on Etsy. I love her polymer clay art. And then she also has a lot of neat little stitch markers too. So I'm going to use one of my stitch markers. And then you want to count in from the opposite side. You want to count in a total of 15. So we're going to count that end stitch as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So in that stitch, you want to take and place your stitch marker. Or you can just use your scraps of yarn too, if you want to. So now you have your stitch marker in place and then you know where you need to stop. So then we're going to continue where we left off with our slip stitches. And then you're just going to make a chain of two, one, two, and then this counts as your first half double crochet. Then you're just going to make one half double crochet in every stitch all the way to the stitch marker. So right before the stitch marker. Don't make a half double crochet into the stitch with the stitch marker. And when you finish this row, you should have a total of 47 half double crochet stitches. So now I have a total of 47 half double crochets and I've reached my stitch marker so I know I made it correctly. So now you've finished, you have your strap on one side and you have your strap on the other side. So now we're going to make the body portion of it or continue with the body portion of it. So now you're just going to turn your work. So go ahead and turn your work and we're going to go back across. So here is the stitch on the end. We're going to go into the next stitch over. So you're just going to yarn over, go into that next stitch, bring up a loop, and then make a half double crochet. So because we didn't chain two, we're going to end up with 46 half double crochet for this row. So you're just going to continue making one half double crochet in every stitch across. So this is my second half double crochet. So here's the first and second. Next half double crochet is the third. And you're going to continue making one half double crochet in every stitch across. And when you're finished, you'll have a total of 46 half double crochet for this row. So now you should have finished that second row and have 46 stitches and you can remove the stitch marker at this point. So we're starting to make the body and you can see we're creating a slight angle for the body portion. So you want to keep track of your stitch count to make sure that you're doing it correctly. So now for the next 10 rows you're going to keep repeating the same pattern. 
So you're going to just turn your work and then in the next stitch you're going to make your half double crochet so you just yarn over go into that next stitch make your half double crochet this counts as your first stitch for the row and then you're just going to make one half double crochet into the next stitch and one half double crochet in every stitch back across and each time that you do that when you turn your work and then make a half double crochet back across you're always going to decrease the stitch count on that row by one so that means when you finish this row you're going to have a total of 45 stitches in the row and you're going to keep doing that where you turn your work and make one half double crochet in every stitch until you've completed a total of 10 rows and each row will have one stitch count less less so after this one it'll be 45 and then 44 43 all the way down until you're at a stitch count of 36 and then come back so now this is what my work looks like you have the two straps here which will go around the neck and then this portion that we just made will go on the back of the outfit and you see how there's a slow slant to the finished row and on this finished row you should have a total of 36 stitches on that row so now we're going to move up to the next row so to move up to the next row you're going to chain two one two and then go ahead and turn your work and now we're going to make a total of nine rows where you maintain the stitch count of 36. So this first chain two that you made counts as your first half double crochet for this first row where we're going to be maintaining the stitch count of 36 for nine rows. So you're going to yarn over, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, and make your half double crochet and then you're just going to make one half double crochet in every stitch across and when you reach the end come come back and I'll show you how I moved up to the next row so I just finished that first row of 36 and to move up to the second row where you're maintaining the stitch count of 36 you again chain two one two and turn your work and then you're going to make a half double crochet into the next stitch and one half double crochet in every stitch back across and you should still have a stitch count of 36 after you finish the second row and you're going to continue repeating this pattern all the way until you complete a total of nine rows with a stitch count of 36 and then come back so now after I finished the nine rows of maintaining the stitch count of 36 we're going to start decreasing again by one stitch count so instead of chaining two after that ninth row you're just going to turn your work and then make a half double crochet into the next stitch and then one half double crochet in every stitch back across and then when you're finished with this row you should have a stitch count of 35 then when you reach the end you're going to turn your work again make a half double crochet into the next stitch and then one half double crochet in every stitch back across and this time when you finish this row you'll have a stitch count of 34 so now you should have a stitch count of 34 and we're going to maintain the stitch count of 34 for three rows so to maintain the stitch count of 34 you have to make a chain of two one two turn your work and then make a half double crochet into the next stitch and one half double crochet in every stitch back across 
and that will give you a stitch count of 34. And you're going to repeat this pattern until you have a total of three rows of a stitch count of 34 and then come back. So now I just finished the third row of 34 stitches on each row and now you're just going to turn your work you're going to keep repeating this turn your work and then make a half double crochet into the next stitch and every stitch across and again you're just going to be decreasing the stitch count by one so now you'll have a stitch count of 33 and you're going to keep repeating this until you have a stitch count of 24 and then come back. Then after you have a stitch count of 24 this is what mine looks like then you can go ahead and finish off. So you just take your crochet hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop and just bring enough yarn through to bury into your work So now you just want to place the stitch markers and you can just use a scrap of yarn if you want to instead of purchasing stitch markers. But I placed mine from the bottom of the top strap. There's, we'll count these as two, one, two. I'll just count the rows. This is a half double crochet row, so there's one, two three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven on the twelfth row. And if you prefer to measure, each box is an inch. So there's one, two, three, so approximately three and a half inches down is where you're going to place your first stitch marker. And then between the stitch markers, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's the eighth stitch, and there's about three inches between the stitch markers. And then directly across on the same row, you're going to place the stitch markers on the opposite side. And this is where we're going to create our straps. So now, this is the top strap and then here's one side where I placed the stitch markers. We're going to join the yarn where we have our first stitch marker. So you can go ahead and remove the stitch marker and then join your yarn. I use the same colored yarn and then just tie a knot and you're going to bury your loose yarn end as you crochet. Now you're just going to make a chain of two and that counts as your first half double crochet for this strap. Then you're going to yarn over, go into the next stitch over, go behind your loose yarn end, bring up a loop, and then make your half double crochet and you're working along the side of the stitches so you want one half double crochet per row so this is my third half double crochet fourth fifth and you're working along the sides of the half double crochet on the row and there's only one half double crochet per row six seven eight nine ten Nine. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut my loose yarn in. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Here's ten. 
And then I'm going to remove my yarn marker. And then I'm going to finish up with a total of 12. So here's 11 and here's 12 half double crochet for the strap. And I'm going to maintain the stitch count of 12 for this strap. To move up to the next row, you're going to chain two, one, two, and then turn your work. And you're going to keep repeating this, chain two, and then one half double crochet in every stitch across, maintaining your stitch count of 12 for 14 rows. So 14 rows of one half double crochet in every stitch, maintaining your stitch count of 12 stitch half double crochet stitches for each row, and then come back. So now, after you finish your 14 rows, then you're going to chain three, one, two, three, and then turn your work. And this will count as your first double crochet for the next two rows. And you're going to maintain the stitch count of 12 still. So we're going to make a double crochet for the next two rows. And you always start with the chain three. So you yarn over, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop. You have three loops on the hook, but this time you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through two loops. You have two loops remaining. Go ahead and yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the two remaining loops to complete a double crochet. And you're going to make one double crochet in every stitch back across. And you're still going to have a stitch count of 12. And we're only going to make two rows of the one double crochet in every stitch. So now I've finished one row of the double crochet. Move up to the next row. For our last row, you're going to chain three. One, two, three, and then turn your work. And then you're just going to make your last row of one double crochet in every stitch back across. Then, after you finish the row, you can go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. And then you're going to repeat the same process for making this strap on the other side. So you're going to repeat the same process. So now, after you finish both straps, we're ready to bury the loose yarn ends. So you just take your loose yarn end and your tapestry needle. Just place the loose yarn end on your tapestry needle and then you're just going to weave it in. And I like to weave it in on the wrong side. Try to go down towards the base of the double crochet and then just weave the loose yarn end along the bottom stitches of the double crochet. and then just trim the loose yarn ends. So go ahead, bury any loose yarn ends, and then come back. So now you can go ahead and set this piece aside. I'm going to show you how to make the hood. So for the hood, I used the same colored yarn, and I started with a magic circle. So you just wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers, and then hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb, just like this. Take your crochet hook, go ahead and bring up a loop. Yarn over, go through the loop for your slip knot. Then you're going to place six single crochet into the magic circle. So there's one, two, three, four, five and six. Then go ahead and hold the base of the six single crochet with your pinky, your forefinger and your thumb. Then you have the two loops on the opposite side. Go ahead and pull on one. If it doesn't close, let go and pull on the other one, but this one's closing. Then take and pull on the loose yarn end. Then just turn your work so that you're working in a circle. So now we have six stitches in the round and we're going to increase to 12 stitches. 
So you're going to take your crochet hook, go into the first stitch, and then you're going to place two single crochet into the same stitch. And you're going to make two single crochet in every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches in the round and then come back. So now you have 12 stitches in the round. Go ahead and turn your work over and pull on the loose yarn end. Then you're ready to make more increased rounds and for those that already know how we're going to increase in chronological order to one single crochet in eight stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch. So for the first increase round take your yarn marker and I just use one of my scraps of yarn and you're going to make one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker one single crochet into the first stitch, two single crochet into the second stitch. And just keep repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So now to get the stitch count for each row all you have to do is add six to the previous round and that's because we started the magic circle with six single crochet. So our last stitch count was 12. If you add six to that, that means you should have a stitch count of 18 at this time. Then go ahead and move the yarn marker up to where we left off and for the next increase round you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. One single crochet into two stitches, two single crochet into the next stitch. Repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So now go ahead and move your yarn marker up and you should know what the pattern is now. We're going in chronological order. So our next increase round is going to be one single crochet into three stitches. and then two single crochet into the next stitch. And then just repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So one single crochet into three stitches, two single crochet into the next stitch, repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then the next round is going to be one single crochet into four stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch, repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So now you should definitely have the pattern and see how we've been going in chronological order. We had one and two, two and two, three and two, four and two, and now we're at one, two, three, four, five. One single crochet into five stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch, repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then the next one will be one and six, then two, one and seven and then two and then our last round will be one single crochet into eight stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch repeating that pattern all the way around. So go ahead finish all of your increase rounds and then come back. So now after you finished your last increase round of one single crochet into eight stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch you should have a total of 60 stitches in the round. Then you're going to take and move your yarn marker up and you're going to maintain the 60 stitches in each round and you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch around. I made one single crochet in every stitch around for eight rounds. Then you can go ahead and make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. Just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and just pull enough yarn through for burying into your work. And then you can remove your yarn marker. And then this, where you finished off, will be towards the back of the head. Now you can pick your eyes 
If you like the anime eyes, again, I have the free PDF download on my blog, www.helenmaycrochet.com. And I'm going to pick this one, I think, for my unicorn. Then you just take and cut. After you print for mine, I used my printer to print this onto fabric paper. The fabric paper that I used is by June Taylor, Color Fast Sew in Fabric Sheets for Inkjet Printers, and it works great. I love it. It's real easy to use. So then you just need to take and cut around the eye. And however you cut the one eye is how you need to cut the other eye. And you want to leave a little bit of room for sewing. I use my white yarn to sew. And you don't have to worry about the eyelash because you can go in between the eyelash to sew it in place. And then you just cut the other eye out the exact same way. Then you just want to heat up your glue gun. And then at the same time, remember that where you finished off on the back of the head is towards the back. And then I put a stitch marker in the center so I know where the center is on the head. And then I'm going to be placing glue on the back. And you can remove the backing if you want to, if you just want the fabric. But I left my backing on. Then you're going to want to go about two rounds up from the bottom of the head and then decide where you would like your eyes to be. And I'm going to leave about four stitches. See here's the center. So I'm going to leave three here and three here for the snout and then one, two, three, four, five stitches between the eyes. So five stitches between the eyes. And then once you're happy with where you want to place your eyes, then you can glue it in place. So here's the center stitch. So two stitches to the right will be one eye. And then two stitches to the left will be the other eye. And then you just want to make sure that your eyes are even. And I just press them in place with the glue. And then you can see how I have two to the right and then two to the left, so a total of five stitches between the eyes. Then you're ready to sew the eyes in place. After the glue is dried, you just take your white thread and sewing needle. And I just used one strand of thread for sewing. Then you can start, I like to start right through the crochet, right next to the eye. So I go right through the crochet on the side of the eye, and then bring the thread through. Then I just go right in between the eyelashes in the white portion. I'll go right through the eye with my needle and then bring the needle through to the wrong side and then tie a knot on the inside then you just continue sewing making stitches all the way around so I'm going to go right next to the eye again with my needle and then I'm going to go right into the white portion back in. And I'm going to continue to sew the eye in place using this method. And I'm going to sew all around the border of the eye. And you could put as many stitches as you want or as little stitches. The main the glue is going to hold the eye, so basically you're just putting stitches in to keep the eye flat. So then this is what it looks like after I've sewn it in place. It looks really beautiful. 
So now I'm going to show you how to make the snout for the unicorn. You're just going to turn the head upside down and you're going to take your crochet hook and you're going to join, here's the middle stitch, you're going to join one, two, three. So in the fourth stitch out, you want to join your soft pink colored yarn and then just tie a knot. and then chain one. Then you can remove the stitch marker then you're going to make one single crochet into the next seven stitches one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then slip stitch into the eighth stitch. So go into the eighth stitch, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then just turn your work and you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch over for one single crochet next stitch for two, single crochet, next stitch for three, next stitch for four, five, six, and seven. Then turn your work, go into the next stitch for one single crochet, next stitch for two single crochet, next stitch for three, four, five, and six. Then you're going to turn your work again. Make one single crochet into one, next stitch for two, three, four, and then you're going to slip stitch into the fifth stitch. So just go right into that fifth stitch, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook. Then you can go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and just pull enough yarn through for burying into your work. So now you can go ahead and bury your loose yarn ends. So I buried the loose yarn end in the center of the hat. I left the loose yarn end on the back of the hat and then I just buried the loose yarn end for the snout. And then we're going to put the nostrils on the snout. Take your tapestry needle with the hot pink colored yarn or whatever color yarn you want for the nostrils and then you're going to come up from the wrong side and you want to go on the second row. So here's the first row right here and then you're going to come up on the second row and then just bring the yarn through. Leave a loose yarn in on the inside and then you want your yarn to be at an angle and then take your tapestry needle and you're going to go right in where you came out and then up one, two. So after the second row you're going to come up with your tapestry needle and you're going to form a loop with your yarn. You're going to come with your tapestry needle through the loop of yarn and keep pulling it through and you'll see how the loop of yarn will close over the yarn. And then you want to go back in just outside of the loop, back in towards the wrong side. And then I like to repeat it one more time. So I'm going to come up at the bottom in the same location as before. The angles at a, the yarns at a 45 degree angle go back in where you just came out and then come up in the same spot through the loop, bring the loop down and then go back in just outside of the loop again towards the wrong side and then tie a knot on the inside 
And then you have one nostril finished. Then repeat the same thing on the other side. And then I tied a knot and then buried my loose yarn ends on the inside. So to bury the loose yarn ends after I tied the knot, I just took my tapestry needle and then I just went in and out. Make sure you don't mess up the design on the nostril side and then just go in and out under the nostril and the pink yarn to bury the loose yarn ends. Then you have your nostrils and snout complete. So now you want to take your stitch markers or you can just use one of your scraps of yarn and you're going to count 10 stitches 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and place your stitch marker in the 10th stitch on both sides. Then after you place your stitch markers on both sides turn the hat upside down and you're going to take your crochet hook go into the same stitch as the stitch marker bring up a loop with your soft pink colored yarn or whatever color yarn you want for the back of the hat and then just tie a knot then you're going to chain one and make one single crochet into the next stitch. Go behind your loose yarn end to bury it. Make your single crochet. And then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch until you reach the next the stitch marker on the opposite side. So one single crochet in each stitch until you reach the stitch marker on the opposite side. When you reach the loose yarn end on the back, you can just go right behind the loose yarn end and bury it as you crochet. So when you reach the stitch marker, you can go ahead and remove it. And you could remove the other stitch marker as well. And then make a single crochet into the same stitch as the stitch marker. Then you're going to chain one, turn your work, and you want to make a single crochet into the next stitch. So here you can see there's a little upslope. That's the base of the chain one stitch. So you want to go into the next stitch for your next single crochet. For the back of my hood, I have 36 stitches. And I want to maintain the stitch count. So if you're off by one, that's fine. Just make sure that you maintain the stitch count now for each row that you make for the back of the hood or the hat and you just want to make one single crochet in every stitch back to where you started. So I reached the opposite side and I'm maintaining my stitch count of 36 which was the same that I got for the first row. So whatever stitch count you got for the first row is the stitch count you're going to maintain. So now to move up to the next row you just chain one, turn your work, make a single crochet into the next stitch and one single crochet in every stitch back across. And You just keep repeating this until you get the number of rows that you want for the back of the hat. So this is what mine looks like after making seven rows of one single crochet in every stitch and now you're ready to crochet it to the back of the outfit. So you just want to bring in your outfit that you just made. You want to place the back outfit with the wrong side up and the top strap facing you and then count in to find the center. 
So I counted 38 stitches in and placed a little yarn marker, one of my scraps of yarn. And then on the hat, you want the right side facing out and place it against the right side of the outfit. So here's the right side, here's the wrong side, and then here's the wrong side on the hat, and then here's the right side on the hat. And you're placing the two yarn markers against each other. So here's the center on the hat, which on mine is about 19 stitches in on the hat for the center. So you line up the two centers so that the right sides are together. Then you can take where you left off and join with the opposite stitch on the outfit. Then just bring up a loop, chain one, then you're just going to make one single crochet into the next stitch. Grab the hat, the stitch on the hat, and the stitch on the outfit. And then you're going to bring up a loop and make a single crochet. And that's how you're going to join the hat to the outfit. Just make one single crochet in every stitch across, joining the back of the hat to the back outfit. And then you can remove the yarn markers. Then when you reach the end you can go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. And then you can go ahead and bury your loose yarn end. And then this is what it looks like on the right side. It looks really beautiful. And now we're ready to make the ears. So now we're going to make the ears, and you can have fun with the ear colors. I'm using a hot pink colored yarn for the inner ear, and then I'm using the so same soft pink colored yarn for the outer ear. So you're going to need two of the outer ear color of your choice, and two of the inner ear. And I'm going to show you how to make one of the inner ears on video tutorials. So you're going to need a total of four, two in one color for the outer ear, and then two in the one color for the inner ear. So you're going to take your yarn, you're going to fold it over on itself to form a loop, take your crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for your slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down and cinch the loop around your crochet hook. And then you're going to make a chain of ten. I'm just going to show you four on video tutorial. Yarn over, go through the loop for one, two, three, four. So go ahead, finish a chain of ten, and then come back. Then, after you finish your chain of ten, you're going to make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. So count back one, two, go right into that second chain from the hook, bring up a loop, make a single crochet, and then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across, and after you finish this row, you're going to have a stitch count of nine. Now we're going to maintain the stitch count of nine for the next two rows. So to move up to the next row, you're going to chain one, turn your work, make a single crochet into the next stitch, and one single crochet in every stitch back across, and when you finish this row, you're still going to have a stitch count of nine. So now we're going to move up to the next row. So you chain one, turn your work, and then make a single crochet into the next stitch, and one single crochet in every stitch back across. And when you finish this row, you're still going to have a stitch count of nine. So now 
you're not going to chain one, you're just going to turn your work, make a single crochet into the next stitch, and one single crochet in every stitch back across. And when you finish this row, you're going to have a stitch count of eight because we didn't make a chain one to start the row. So after this, you finish this row, you'll have a stitch count of eight. Then you're just going to turn your work again, make a single crochet into the next stitch, next stitch for two, next stitch for three, next stitch for four, five, six, and seven. So you can see you're decreasing each row by one. So now you just turn your work, go into the next stitch for one single crochet, next for two, three, four, five, six. Turn your work, next stitch, make a single crochet, next stitch for two, three, four, and five. Turn your work, go into the next stitch for one, two, three, four. Turn your work, one, two, three. Turn your work, one, two, turn your work, and then slip stitch into the next stitch. Yarn over, pull the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch, then finish off. Just yarn over and just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. So now you can see that I have two triangles for the inner ear in the hot pink, and then I made two triangles for the outer ear in the soft pink. So now I'm going to show you how to crochet the two pieces together to make the ear. So you just take whatever color that you want for the inside of the ear goes on top. So that triangle goes on top. And then I like to line up the loose yarn ends so I can tie a knot. Then you just take your crochet hook, go right into the top corner of both stitches at the bottom of the triangle, and then bring up the yarn color for the outer ear. So whatever color is the outer ear is the color that you want to use to crochet the ear pieces together. And then I just tie a knot with the loose yarn ends. Then you can take and chain one And then you're going to be crocheting along the side of the triangles. So you're also going to be crocheting along the side of the stitches of the triangle. So sometimes you just have to kind of wiggle your crochet hook through both side stitches of the triangle. And then evenly space your single crochet stitches along the side of the triangle. And I kind of jiggle my crochet hook back and forth to get through both. And then you're just going to make one single crochet evenly spaced along the side of the triangle. And then you're crocheting the two triangle pieces together. When you get to the tip of the triangle, you can tuck the loose yarn ends in the inside of the triangle. And then in the tip of the triangles, you want to make two single crochet into the same stitch. And then you're going to go down the opposite side and then just make one single crochet in every stitch evenly spaced down the opposite side.
Then when you reach the bottom, you can go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the back of the ear in place. So this colored yarn will be used to sew the back of the ear and then you're using your hot pink colored yarn to sew the front of the ear. Take any loose yarn ends and just tuck them right into the inside of the ear and use it as stuffing. And then your ear is ready to sew in place. So for sewing the ear, I'm going to sew with my hot pink colored yarn first on my tapestry needle and then I'm going to show you an easy way that I line up the ears. So I want to go about midway on the eye and count out one, two, three, four, five, six stitches and I'm going to come up with my tapestry needle. Then you're going to take the ear and then go up into the corner of the ear and then bring the yarn through. Make sure you leave enough yarn on the inside for tying a knot. Then you can take and go back in at the same point about a stitch up and go in and tie your knot. Then you're going to take your tapestry needle and you're going to come up, use the magic circle as a landmark and count out one, two, three, four, five, and then just five rounds out. And then I'm also from the top of the eye, you go one, two, three, four, around the fifth round that way as well and I'm about midline up from the eye. Then you can take and grab the inside corner of the ear. And then that's how I sewed my ear in place. That way you know how to line up the other ear too. So whatever position you put this ear is the same position you want to use to place the other ear. And then you can kind of fold the ear in if you want to create a little slant. And then just go right in and finish sewing the ear in place. Just go in and out, sewing the front of the ear only. So this is what it looks like on the inside after I bury the loose yarn ends up into the ear. Then you're ready to sew the back of the ear in place. So then you just take your tapestry needle, place it on to the light colored yarn, and then position the back of the ear, kind of just open it up, make sure that no loose yarn ends are coming out. And then you can take and sew the back of the ear in place. This is what mine looks like after putting the ears in place. You can see how they look the same on both sides, which is what you want. Now you can set this aside while you make the horn. So for my horn, I'm using my blue sparkly colored yarn, and you're gonna take the yarn, fold it over on itself to form a loop, take your crochet hook, go right through the loop, Hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and thumb. Then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for your slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down and cinch the loop around your crochet hook. Now you're going to make a chain of 18. I'm just going to show you four on video tutorial. Just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for one, two, three, Four. So go ahead, finish a chain of 18, and then come back. So after you make your chain of 18, you're going to take and make a slip stitch into the first chain that you made. So take your crochet hook, go into that first chain that you made, and then make a slip stitch so that it joins and forms a circle. 
Then chain one, and then you're going to make one single crochet into the next stitch, and one single crochet in every stitch around. So now I'm back to where I started and make sure that you still have 18 stitches in the round and then you can continue making one single crochet in every stitch around and make sure that you're working along the outside so the wrong side is towards the inside and that you're not twisting your work. And if you find that you don't have 18 stitches in the round and say you have only 17, you can make one more stitch in the same stitch to increase to a stitch count of 18. So make sure that you're maintaining your stitch count. If it's more helpful to add a yarn marker to help you keep track of your stitch count, you can add that right where you left off and then just continue making one single crochet in every stitch around maintaining your stitch count of 18. When you reach the yarn marker you should still have a total of 18 stitches in the round and you're going to continue making one single crochet in every stitch around maintaining your 18 stitches in the round until you've completed five total rounds. So, so far I have one to start, second, and then third. So I'm working on my third one now. And you want a total of five. Then go ahead and move the yarn marker up to where you left off. And then you're going to make a decrease round. You're going to make one single crochet into two stitches. And then you're going to single crochet two stitches together. You want to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. One single crochet into two stitches and then single crochet two stitches together repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then just make one single crochet into any remaining stitches. Now you should have a total of 14 stitches in the round move your yarn marker up to where you left off and then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for eight rounds. So eight rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. Then after you finish eight rounds of one single crochet in every stitch go ahead and move the yarn marker up to where you left off and then you're going to make a decrease round. For this decrease round you're going to make one single crochet into one stitch and then single crochet two stitches together. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. One single crochet into one stitch and then single crochet two stitches together repeating that pattern all the way around and then just place one single crochet into each of the remaining stitches. So now I have 10 stitches in the round. So we're going to make five rounds of 10 stitches in the round. So what you can do, an easier way than using the yarn marker, is just make one single crochet in every stitch until you reach the number 50. So you just count one, two, three, four, and then just keep counting until you get to 50 and then come back. Now after you reach 50, this is what my work looks like so far. Then you can make a single crochet two stitches together three times. So here's one, two, 
to and 3. So now I have 7 stitches in the round and I'm going to make 3 rounds of 7 stitches in the round which 7 times 3 is 21 so you're going to count one single crochet for 21 stitches. So count up to 21. Here's one, two. So go ahead, finish counting one single crochet in every stitch until you get to 21, then come back. Then this is what my work looks like. Then you can take and slip stitch the tip closed. So you just go right into the next stitch with your crochet hook. You can skip one and then go into the next stitch. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch and then just go across again to make another slip stitch until the tip is closed. Then you can go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. Then you can take your tapestry needle, put it onto the tip of the loose yarn end, and just bring the loose yarn end right through the center of the horn. Now you can keep the horn this way or you can wrap a chain around the horn. I'm going to show you how I wrapped a chain with the hot pink yarn. So you take your hot pink colored yarn, fold it over on itself to form a loop. Take your crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and thumb. Then yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for your slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down and cinch the loop around your crochet hook. And then I'm just going to show you four chains on video tutorial. So you yarn over, go through the loop for one, two, three, and four. And then you just continue making your chain the size that you need to wrap around the horn. When you come back, I'll show you how long I made my chain. So for mine, I made a chain of 60. And then when you finish your chain, go ahead and yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the chain onto the horn. So now you can add a little craft stuffing to the horn. And then the long end that you left for sewing will be at the top, the tip. Go ahead and sew the pink portion to the tip. Then you can wrap the chain and then sew at the same time as you twist and sew the pink portion of the chain. Grab my scissors to the horn. So you just keep wrapping and sewing. This is how mine looks after I finished and then I took my blue sparkle yarn on my tapestry needle to sew the horn onto the hat and then you could tuck any loose yarn ends into the center of the horn and then you're just going to position the horn slightly so that the horn, the back of the horn is lined up with the ears and then the front of the horn is forward. And mine is actually a little bit, the back of the horn is lined up with the magic circle. Then on, I start from the back and then come up on the blue portion and then sew the horn in place. I'm going to tie a knot. And 
And then you're just going to sew all around the base of the horn. So you just go in and out, making sure that the horn is centered, and then just sew it in place. And then this is what my horn looks like after I've sewn it in place. Then you're ready to make the loops of hair down the back of the head. You can start with whatever yarn color that you want and have fun with it. I'm going to start with the yellow colored yarn and I'm going to line up the rows, the looped rows with the horn. So I'm going to go right up to the horn. And then you want the loops of yarn to be about, I made mine about six inches in length. And then I just made the loops of yarn. And you want them to be about the same size. And then just continue looping across the width of the horn. Then when you're finished, you just take the ends of the loops and just tie knots. Be careful when you tie your knot that you don't pull the yarn through. And then you just keep cutting the loops and tying knots. until you, all of the loops have been cut and knots have been tied. And you can make as many rows that you want of one color. Then just push the hair up and then grab your next color and mine is going to be this turquoise and then just below where you had the yellow the same width you're going to take and loop the next colored yarn and like I said you can make as many rows that you want in a particular color and you can always trim the hair later too so if you want to make a little bit of a longer length and then trim it and that's how I made the hair on the back. And this is what it looks like when I'm finished. Now you can set it aside while I show you how to make the little flower button. Go ahead and get whatever yarn color that you want for your flower. I'm using my pretty in pink or hot pink colored yarn. And you're going to take the yarn, fold it over on itself to form a loop. Take your crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. Then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down, cinch the loop around your crochet hook, and then you're going to make a chain of five. One, two, three, four, five. And then you're going to slip stitch into that first chain that you made. So go right into that first chain that you made and then yarn over, turn the hook upside down and then go through both loops for a slip stitch. Then you're going to chain three. One, two, three and then single crochet into the center of the circle. And then you're going to repeat that five times. Chain three single crochet into the circle for your second. So now you should have five chain three loops. So you're going to go into the first chain three loop and make a single crochet, then a half double crochet into the same chain three loop. So yarn over, go into the same chain three loop, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, Go through all three for a half double crochet. 
Then make a double crochet, yarn over, go into the same chain three loop, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, go through two, two loops remaining, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the remaining two. Then you're going to make a half double crochet in the same chain three loop, and then a single crochet. And then you have one petal complete. You're going to make the same petal in each of the chain three loops. So I'm going to repeat one more with you. Make a single crochet, a half double crochet, a double crochet, another half double crochet, and a single crochet into the same chain three loop. So go ahead, repeat the petals in each of the chain three loops. This is what it looks like when I'm finished. Then you just make a slip stitch into that first single crochet that you made. Just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops. Then go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. And then you need two of these. Actually, when you finish off, you can leave a long loose yarn end for sewing this flower button in place. So now you can bury the loose yarn end. And if you cut your other loose yarn end a little short, then you can use the same colored yarn to sew this button in place. I'm just going to bury my loose yarn end on the inside and then go ahead and trim that one. And then I'm going to use this one to sew. I still have enough to use that one to sew in place. And then you're just going to take and move the long end that you left for sewing towards the center. So you're going to be sewing all around the center of the flower. and then the outer edges or petals will work as the button itself. So now you can take and you can decide which side you want to place your button. So I'm going to place my button onto the inner strap. So I'm going to place the bottom strap button first because the double crochets that I created on the end will work as the buttonhole. So you want the flower to fall somewhere along the middle of the double crochet on the last row on your left strap. So if the head is facing away from you, I have the wrong side facing up, and then I have my left and right straps. So you're going to place your button on the right strap. So you want to get your tapestry needle ready. And then you want to decide where you want to have the button. So the middle double crochet will be the buttonhole. And if you don't like the size of this as the buttonhole, I'm going to show you how to make a button strap that you can use as well. So I'm going to place my flower about right here on my strap on the right. And remember, you need to fold the strap in before you sew the button in place. And you want to sew all around the center of the button to the strap only. So you just go in and out along the center, and you're sewing the flower button to the strap only. So you don't want to sew it to the back of the pet outfit. So you just go in and out, sewing the center of the flower button only. Until the center is completely sewn in place. And then you can take and tie a knot. 
I'm going to tie a knot on the wrong side. So I'm just going to take and go through and just create a knot. And then I'm going to bury the loose yarn ends on the back. So I'm going to go right under the flower and you want to make sure that you don't ruin the design on the front. And just bring the loose yarn end through and just bury it in place. Then you have your flower button in place. And depending on the size of your button, will be decide if you can use the double crochet as a buttonhole. In this case, it's too big, so I'm going to show you how to make a buttonhole loop to fit around the button. So you're going to take your crochet hook and you're just going to join it, count in one, two, three, four, into the fifth double crochet from the right. And then I'm joining my pink, hot pink colored yarn. And then just tie a knot. And then you're going to make a chain loop. So I'm going to make a chain of eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I'm going to skip one, two stitches and then make a single crochet into the next stitch. Then I'm going to go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. And then that's how you create your little buttonhole loop. And then you just bury your loose yarn ends on the wrong side. So I'm just going to take and weave the loose yarn end over and then I'm going to go ahead and tie another knot and then bury the loose yarn end again just to make sure it's nice and secure. So go ahead make the button loop if you need it and then bury your loose yarn ends And then you have a nice button loop that you can take. You kind of may need to fold your flower, bring it through the loop, and then you have a little button loop and a flower to hold it, act as a button to hold the pet outfit in place. And then you repeat the same process for the, t the button that goes on the top strap. So for the top strap, I placed the flower button close to where the strap meets the back of the body. So you can see where I placed mine. And then I made another button loop on the opposite side. And then you have the button, flower button, for the top strap. So for the tail, I made it the exact same way that I made it for the mane at the top of the head, or the back of the head, and I started right at the row with the strap right in the center. So you want to center, and I made the same width for the tail that I did for the, the mane on the back of the head. So I'm going to make mine about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 stitches wide. And then you're going to loop the yarn the same way that you did for the hair on the back of the head. So you want it about 6 inches, about the same length. And like I said before, you can make it longer if you want to. And then you can trim it later. But then I just looped the yarn. Make sure the loops are all the same. So it's made the same way that you made the hair on the back of the head.
So you can see I made the width right in the center of the back portion of the body. And then, just like I did for the back of the head, I'm going to bring my next color in just beneath, the row beneath the previous one, and I'm making it still six inches in length. And this is what it looks like when I'm all finished. So you can see how I layered and I stopped with the orange again. And then when you flop it back, you have an adorable, colorful tail.